Um, I mean, let's see how this goes. I got a trimmer up. I thought, uh, I was talking about hooves earlier, so I thought I would, um, do a live stream wait the back here I think the Wi-Fi is good Lena you're in big trouble now big trouble okay all right let's put with horses and cameras, eh? They're always wanting to touch stuff. Um, we're kind of out in the muck. Let's see. Maybe, maybe like that. Hmm. I think we should move her. I think we should go into the paddock or the shelter. And I will go get her, and you guys will have to be a little bit patient. We've got all kinds of things happening today. Very busy day. So just give me a second. I'm just going to enjoy the view for a couple of minutes here. Okay, well, I guess the funniest part is that when I wasn't here, she just came in, right? Okay, I've uh, I've wrangled up this wild beast. Whoa, I can't even see us anymore. Too much backlighting. Okay, we got to trim her up. Lena's... Uh, She's got uh, she's got some lung toes and stuff, so we've got to trim her up. I thought I thought I would uh, show you guys what I think about what I do, what I go about doing. I must smell awfully good. <laughs> what a goofball! Okay, goofball, it's your trimming day. Uh, so we've talked about hoof stuff quite a few times already. Uh, we've talked about tools, we've talked about 
Well, this morning I talked about hoof sharpening, hoof knife sharpening, not hoof sharpening. Um, and uh, so now I guess we'll just do a quick talk about trimming and I'll go ahead and trim her front feet uh, with you guys around. Hopefully this will make sense even here. So first thing we're going to do is bring you guys, I guess, this way. We'll talk about her feet a little bit. Um, so Lena's a drafty something or other. I don't know. We don't actually know what she is. She's... Oh, okay. Stay there. She's some form of draft Oldenburg, we were told. And uh, if you guys ask questions, go ahead and ask questions. I, I can't look at the screen and do the same thing at the same time. If Jen comes over, she might be able to field some questions from you guys at the same time. Actually, that's a good idea. Huh. Well, she's not feeling well today, so maybe we won't hassle her too much. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, so if you do ask... Um, Ah, she's, she's on her way, she says. You're watching the live stream? 200 feet away! Um, she's not feeling well. I wasn't expecting her to come out. She might still come out if she's still watching. I don't know. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> it's glitchy on the streaming. I'll try not to move too much. If, uh, if we can get a straight line all the way to the... All the way to the house and we might be okay i'll just move you guys this way a little all right so we really want lena to stick around hi come here i need you come back around there tub tub okay shuffle through don't knock the camera with your butt ah you guys are gonna get smoked okay come here lena good girl okay it's a little windy Okay, let's talk feet. Let's talk feet. Uh, so, she's a... Oof, okay. So she's a, she's an Oldenburg draft. Um, which, when horses are draft horses, glides or whatever, you know, the bigger horses, they, they generally have much bigger feet. Um, thicker walls and all kinds of stuff like that and so when we go to trim we, there, there's there's different ways to look at feet whether they have thin walls or thick walls um, and uh, so when we look at these things they're gonna look maybe not anything like your horse so don't worry about that I'll probably just try to talk about concepts of trimming a little here um, but overall, Lena has pretty good feet. When we got her, she had pretty pancakey feet. Pancakey meaning that uh, they were kind of flat, and um, they didn't uh, they didn't have good uh, height, so they were uh, sort of splayed out a little bit. So uh, over time, if you trim on a regular schedule and uh, be consistent and careful about it, um, uh, then they uh, oh here's Jen. Okay, so we have to figure this out. I think what we'll need to do is switch cameras and then she can turn it around and and uh, keep a... So we'll switch the camera around and then flick this around like so and then down. And then if you kind of keep me in uh, here. Just going to show Jen how this works real quick. So this here shows the comments okay. and you can scroll around like that. Let me know if you see a troublemaker in there. Uh, there's a way to ban them, but uh, overall, everybody's pretty new. <laughs> so I'm not too worried. If you want it to go away, you can just click this, or click the, no, I don't know. It just goes away by itself. That's to change the camera. Uh, don't worry about the rest, there's nothing more. Um, but people might ask questions in there. If it feels like a good opportunity, you can change the, the height. Like that, so okay. I don't know what it looked like because now the screen's the other way. But we're just going to talk about Lena's feet. 
so um yeah when she came she was uh, uh, pretty splayed out and stuff so we've got her feet standing up pretty good um, but she's got um, well she's due for a trip so she grows quite quickly and I'm probably about a week behind and I if you've got what if you guys watched the last live stream Jane what are you doing? You're distracting me now I can't handle it. I usually do this by myself she's distracting me she's quickly clicking the screen okay ignore you um, <laughs> So, uh, I'm probably, when I was talking on the last live stream about hoof stuff, I said uh, a bunch of stuff. But one of the things I answered the question on is how often you trim the hooves. And I say three to four weeks. I'd say Lena's definitely on the high four week side. Um, just, I mean, mostly her feet are okay to go a little longer because she stands a little taller rather than splaying out now. So I don't worry as much. Um, and uh, so let me just borrow the camera for a second. I'll show you guys a little how she looks from the side. And so you can see she's she's got some height and uh, she's pretty roundy and stuff and totally adorable, 100% adorable. So that's a good sign. You have a horse? Okay. So the important thing when it comes to trimming, uh, I believe, is to to trim to what the uh, what the, the bottom of the hoof says. So if you ever see people trimming and they only trim sort of from the top or something like that, it's a really super inaccurate way to trim a hoof correctly to uh, be balanced. Um, and it's very, very important to take a look at the bottom. You need to know what's going on in the bottom of the foot to judge the rest of the trim. The outside edge is uh, usually more of a for finishing. And uh, we'll talk about that as I get to it. But for now, we'll pick up our feet. I have no idea what I'm going to find. I do believe she's a little bit overdue. So probably going to find some stuff that needs to be taken off and cleaned up. Um, I mean, overall, her feet don't look bad to me. So let's take a look. We've got uh, a rasp. I've got my knives, my little nippers that I've shown you guys a million times, maybe, maybe just a couple times. But, uh, and uh, my uh, hoof, hoof pick. So we'll ask for her foot, and uh, hopefully she'll balance herself out and hand it over. So that's kind of nice. Full of stuff. Um, when you go to clean out a hoof, you know, really try to clean out this way. And ugh. Lena, can I have your foot back, please? Okay. Really kind of clean out this way and this way. It's okay to do both. You don't have to go just this way. You can clean out that back bit there, and you'll see that stuff will come out. And uh, We'll give that a good cleaning and see what she looks like. So, camera's on, good. All right, so the first thing that I can see is that she's really wearing out her toe quite a bit and her heels are a little high. She'll wear out her toe more because her heels are high and uh, in, in line with that, these things here, if you guys have paid attention to any of my hoof videos, uh, you'll know that these bars are pretty long uh, she's got a good solid frog very very firm and strong so i'm not worried about her frog at all but we will probably need to uh, take some off because it's ready for one and uh, for two it'll be too tall by the time i bring these walls down so let's give her foot back for a second uh the other thing about doing hoof stuff whether it's just cleaning hooves or if you're trimming them a really good thing to do is give back their hoof before they even ask for it. You can get uh, far more time out of the horse if you are uh, consistently giving back their feet before they ask. It's just a nice thing to do. Did we want to answer? Did we want to? Did we want to answer questions? Sue wants closer. So it's good. Sue wants Kevin. closer. Yeah. Sure. Idea. Okay. Uh, 
if there's anything super important, I don't know. Well, I've got about this side now. So. It's easier. What's that? I've oh, yeah, sure. That's better. what I do, too. Yeah. Here's a second phone. Okay, everybody, let's, uh, let's see if we can get Lena to her foot nicely, which she is, and let's get on with trimming. So you have to trim from, from the bottom, and that's what we're doing. We're taking a look at what her foot is going to tell us to do. And a really cool thing is that she's got this great wear pattern that we can follow. So we're going to take our walls down a whole bunch and you can see how thick these walls are. If any of you have horses, you'll know that, you know, these are big, thick, strong walls. So just work away at this and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. There's one interesting one. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions while I'm trimming? If you are riding a barefoot horse and they hug the side of the trail to get on the grass, what part of the foot do you think is the problem? Uh, I wouldn't know until I would look at it. But I can say for sure that horses that... Um, almost any horse, barefoot or shod, uh, will, will happily hug the side of a trail. I wouldn't uh, consider that abnormal. In fact, I'd consider it quite normal. And why are they doing that? It's just more comfortable. Ah. Yeah, it's just a natural, more comfortable feel uh, for them. So right now I'm just trying to get these bars to come back straight. Now she's asking for her foot back, so I'm gonna give it to her. So as I was explaining in the video from this morning, um, you want to try to give their feet back before they uh, they really have to demand it back. Otherwise, they won't have as much patience with you and um, you'll have a harder time as you go, you know, as you go along. If you're kind about it and you let them know you're going to be patient, you'll... No, no. Great, it's live. Just hit the camera there. There you go. There you go. Okay, YouTube crashed. You fixed the it. The app crashed. So. Okay. Do you know that draft horses have worse feet than lighter horses? Um. To be pretty careful about how I answer this, eh? I think that the majority of draft horses that are maintained in the way that they are maintained have much poorer feet than almost any horse out there. So. But if trimmed correctly uh, in a timely manner and treated well with a good diet, I think they have the strongest hooves of any horse. Lena has good feet. Yeah. Hmm? Lena. Lena has great feet. Right? Yeah. She's a draft. Okay. Yeah. Do you shoe any of your horses? Oh, that's a old comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Question? Yeah. You have said you don't shoe your horses. Can you share why you would ever want to she and how long you have to wait between shoeing? Is it supposed to decrease barrier visits? What? Um... How long should you wait between trims? Uh, I answered that it's a very common question, so I'll answer it again. Happy to answer it again. The last, check out the last live stream I did from this morning, if you're bored. Um, but the short version is, I trim every three to four weeks. I think anything longer is detrimental to the horse and introduces or can introduce and then maintain uh, uh, large deviations and problems. That was weird. It's just breathing in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> it's three to four weeks, people. Trim every three to four weeks. When you got to shoe them and you have a ferry, I said this in the live stream earlier, you know, it's 200 bucks every three to four weeks. I'd sell my horse. It's a lot of money. So when you shoe them, it's a lot harder. People, re people reduce farrier visits because they're costly. Stay with me. 
Okay, no, I meant why would people shoe their horses? Sorry. Oh, why do people shoe their horses? Oh, God. If we get into this discussion, we'll never get back out. Why do people shoe their horses? <coughs> I don't know. You'll have to ask those people. If I answer this question, I think I'm going to get in trouble. Sue so. <coughs> says maybe tradition? Yeah, tradition, old culture... Um, they do what they're advised to do by people who know it best. Uh, a lot of people just trust their, their horse caregivers, their horse care providers. Uh, you know, and, but there are more and more people who are asking more and more questions and wondering, you know, what else can be done? Um, you know, what are the options and why are the options good or bad or whatever? And, uh, so, Zeus, go get her! Go get her! Not me! You goof. Anyways. <laughs> she um, said brainwash to keep shoes on. Ah, <laughs> uh, brainwash. You know, the, the, the same people will say that, uh, you know, barefoot people are brainwashed too. So <laughs> I always just tell people, you know, if you've got questions, ask them. Don't settle for answers like, it's just the way it is, or just the way it goes, or that's just how it is, or any of these, uh, you know... Um, Answers that don't give you any substance. Is there a big lens flare on the screen? Just out of curiosity. No. No, it's good. Because well, the sun's coming inside. Well, that's great. Um, <coughs> so. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, it's gonna. You gotta be able to provide trust your provider of care, whether it's a vet or farrier. If you have questions, ask them. Kathy, and, sorry. And Kathy's wondering: Is there a specific time when a horse should be shooed? In my opinion? Yeah. Never. Okay. She's also wondering how long does it take for a horse's hoof to go bad if not cared for properly? Weeks. That's such a big question though. I don't know if we're gonna get this hoof trim done today. <laughs> um it's going to depend a lot on diet and environment. So if uh, your horse is not getting a good enough amount of nutrition or they're in an environment that's destructive to their feet, like stay, say, say for example, they have to stay in a stall all the time. Maybe they're on stall rest. Maybe they just don't get out and they have to stand around their own manure and urine all the time, shavings that are soaked and stuff. Very quickly, the hoof will deteriorate and rot naturally. Uh, you can't get away from it. So if a horse is kept on very good terrain and they have a great diet, it wouldn't be weeks, it might be months. Uh, but in a lot of cases on the domestic horses that we have and the conditions that we keep them in, it could be a matter of weeks before things start to go sideways. Um, so there you go. What do you think the dynamics are as to why draft horses have poor feet? Genetics, oh breed? You people and your difficult questions. And <laughs> you, you know, this is on the internet. Um, no, I don't think it has anything to do with the breed at all. Um, so that's a straighter bar there that comes in clear at all. Flaky white stuff. Um, why do drafts get bad feet? I guess I will give a catch-all answer to this. Horses get bad feet through poor maintenance. If you see that a horse has bad feet, it is likely through either past poor maintenance or current poor maintenance. Yeah, man-made, usually. Man-created. This is a neat question. Okay. Once a horse has had shoes on, yep. how long does it take for the original integrity of the hoof to come back once you've taken them off? Depends on how far off they are to begin with. Um, some horses come out of shoes really well. Their feet are already pretty good. I've got one that's new under my care. And uh, she came out of shoes, <laughs> took her shoes off, and... Um, She's doing pretty good. I mean, it's going to be a little bit more, probably 
at least a few months to sort of maintain that uh, proper trim cycle and, uh, and angles to get things back on track. But she came out of shoes very, very well. Very impressive, actually. But some will take, depending on bad they are, you could be a minimum of eight to 12 months to, you know, possibly a couple of years. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Teresa's there. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Um, when a horse is said to have foundered, what exactly has happened? And is it irreversible? Or reversible? Sorry. Uh, okay. Founder and laminitis. Oh, you advanced question people. All right, um, <laughs> no problem. I'm missing a knife. Founder and laminitis, sort of, it's, it's recognized as just about the same thing. Um, now, uh, what, we'll, what we'll concentrate on is the fact that what has generally happened to the hoof is that it's, if you've got, so you've got the inside of the hoof and then the outside wall grows downwards. Let's flip that around. It grows downwards. And when they get laminitic or founder, whether it's through diet or it's mechanical, meaning it's through uh, uh, pressure, trauma, uh, the, essentially what happens is the hoof wall starts to veer off and come out and flare. So I personally believe that 95% of the cases uh, if properly maintained and and worked on, can be completely reversed. So, Gwen says YouTube needs to stop crashing, but we're not having any problems. But someone might be watching it. Sorry, guys. Sorry about the YouTube app. <laughs> it's not working. I'll call oh. them up uh, tomorrow. Here's a good one. Do you find light colored feet are really weaker than dark colored feet? They're which? Are light colored feet really weaker than dark colored feet? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's a myth. It's just because you can see it because there's not as much pigment. Right? Oh, uh, yeah, you can see the problems. That's correct. You can see the problems better in lighter colored feet. Wow, look at that. It's pulling out the grab. So trimming the frog here, I've discovered there's a pocket of gunk. So I'm just going to trim that out there. Just wait, Lena, wait. Juliet says thanks and that you're doing a great job. Oh, thanks. And you're welcome. Hopefully this is useful to somebody out there. JD's asking if it's sore once you cut the frog like that. Nope. It better not be. Uh, no, 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 no. If um, <coughs> if a horse has been trimmed up and they're sore immediately after, then uh, something went wrong with the trim. The frog is thick. We'll talk anatomy soon. I mean, if I had one of my props with me, I could show you. If I had one of my props with me, I could probably show you what I mean. Which, uh, which one? One of my, just hinting ever so subtly. Uh, whatever, whatever one, like one of those half ones. One of those you can open? Yes, please. Yeah. All right, I'm on it. Um, <coughs> I have two assistants today, plus the dog. <laughs> and a very good horse. Right, Lena? Treats for Lena. Um, frogs are really quite thick if well as always on a healthy horse a well-maintained horse frogs are very thick and strong if you've cut so much frog off uh, that they're sore after that uh, it's a, it's an unusual case to have to do that if it's done inadvertently or accidentally or on purpose without knowledge of how much frog can be taken off uh, then you'll have a sore uh, horse that should be kept on softer ground for a while until it grows back healthy. Hopefully that helps. Okay, let's keep trimming. Okay, so it's a little more. 
frog off. Let's shake this thing up. Okay, when I'm trimming, I'm thinking about balance and uh, symmetry. Essentially, which are pretty much the same thing in this regard. I'm trying to make sure that her foot looks like it's the right way, both inside to outside and back to front. So we'll see how this goes here. Oh, Lena, hang on. Thank you for bringing that prop. It's very handy. Almost on one foot. Yeah. How long have we had Lena? I don't know. It's three, three years, years, four years. So. Yeah, three or four years. Thank you very much. Haha. <laughs> Janie says, maybe hubby will make you some soup later. Hint, hint. <laughs> Someone else is subtle. <laughs> yeah. I got udon soup yesterday. Yeah, I got... <laughs> Can I eat Zeus it? Is, <laughs> Zeus is staring at this thing like there's no tomorrow. What? I cannot eat this. This is a prop covered in varnish. Okay. So, um, if we take a look at the frog on the bottom of this thing here. Um, now, this is not... A big foot, it's not as big as Lena's, for example, but when we look on the underside, you can see how much frog is here. Not a lot. If you were to take off, say, half an inch or something like that, like some cuts will make, you'd take off probably close to half the frog, maybe even more. This horse would be sore after that. So when you understand how the internals work and what should be there, then you know how much you can take off to make them sore or not sore, for that matter. No. <sighs> Lena's one foot is almost done. Okay. This is a good one. How do you get a horse used to giving you her foot and cooperate if they're not used to it? Oh, I did a video on that a while ago. Uh, a really detailed one. So I recommend looking at that one. I don't know if I remember what it's called. Probably something like getting a horse used to picking up their feet do a search on the channel you'll find it but a lot of patience you know if I ask for a foot come on Lena she's got to make a little adjustment and maybe she'll okay you're in big trouble you're being a bad model right now you're, <laughs> you're gonna get it come forward always set your horse up to be ready to pick up its foot so that when you ask they just pick it up hey try again I'll catch it this time come on there. So something like that where she lifts it up and puts it in my hand. It's patience and time. And making sure to give it up when they ask, not when they demand. If that makes any sense. I'm just going to finish the final bits here. And you'll see that I haven't touched this part here because it's already worn down enough where she needs it. I'll just give it a quick once over here. And you'll see I almost never trim from the top. It's unusual for me to bother to do that. Juliet says, very symmetrical, looks very good. Yeah, almost done. Hoof. Take some of that hoof. But he's going up to her face. Oh, really? Yeah. Up to the hay bag. It's just weird. Come here. Hey. Come here. Just lay down again. Come here. Just lie down. Take a nap. I don't recommend chopping up the frogs too much, for sure. She's got a lot of excess, and you can see that because this is chalky. 
and sort of falls off just as I scrape it. Um, so, but I'm not going to go and indiscriminately sort of start chopping up the frog. I think that's detrimental. So that goes in line with the question about frogs. Who well, taught you to do such a good job? Yeah. Me? I don't know. Uh, I'm a lot of self learn I do a, oh, she's asked for it back. I'll give it back. Um, okay, no, I did learn from my vet uh, about the biology of the hoof. I went to a very in-depth clinic where we did um, dissections. And I became so interested, I ended up getting my own. Oh, camera, camera. Okay, so there you go. You never know when a horse is going to freak out. What are you looking at? Snow came off the roof. Yeah, yeah there's nothing here. Calm down. Thanks for not running me over. Holy smokes. Okay. Well, we almost got an accident on camp. But we didn't. No pancakes. <laughs> no pancakes. What was they saying? Who taught you? Oh, right. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I definitely got a lot of information in my head about the biology and understanding what goes on inside. I've done a lot of my own research dissections, um, as you can see the props there, and then a heck of a lot of practice and continuous studying every day. After a while you just get good at it, <coughs> well, at least you think you are. <laughs> Does that sound confident? No, it's good. The old farmer where I kept one of my horses used to give us bag balm to use on the feet if they were dry. Huh. I don't know what that is. But... Yeah. Cool. Maybe it yeah. Bags? And then look at the belly. Love it. Ha ha ha. I agree, Sue. It's a cute belly. Thanks. <laughs> I keep it trim. <laughs> Cookies. I'm partially trim. <laughs> All right. I think we're almost done here. On this foot. Uh, last thing that you kind of do, like I said, most of the, if not all the trim is done from the bottom, is I'm going to take my rasp, I'm going to see if it rocks. If it rocks on the bottom of her foot, it means her frog is a little high still and doesn't match where her walls are telling the frog to be. So I'll shave a little more off and get it smooth. Try again. It doesn't rock anymore. And that's pretty good. I'm going to round off this little corner here. It's asking for a foot back. So I got to give it back. I think that's pretty good. I'd call that done. And so then you'll be able to see. From the front. And this is why we don't trim from the top, but you'll see it starts to look quite normal, despite the fact that I haven't touched the top of the foot at all. Okay, you guys can live there for a second. <laughs> do, 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 a little move, uh, over. Just watch her butt a little. Move over, but don't go forward. Nice side pass. We need your other foot, please. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, shedding like crazy. Okay, let's do the other foot so you guys can see what this looks like. Um, you know, obviously she's been with us for so long. Generally, this is the bad side for all horses or for Lita? Uh, most horses are worse on this side because people are right-handed and they don't lead with their left hand. Yeah. They lead with their right hand with their horse. So they spend a lot of the time on that side. And uh, culturally, that's where people are taught. They're taught on that side. So horses get very, very used to keeping trouble in their left eye. To ask them to keep trouble in their right eye usually gives them trouble. But I think that's pretty good. So I'll ask for her foot. She says no problem. 
Well, I know the answer to this one, but I'll let you do it. <laughs> do you think horses feel better after a good trim? Yeah. Or is it just a guess? No, they do. You'll know it too, because the next time you show up, they'll be happy to have you there. They'll pick up their feet nicer. They'll be calmer about it. They'll start making requests. You know, play this music, play that music. Can I watch that movie? <laughs> just kidding. Essentially, they'll ask for a foot and they'll know that you're going to help them out. And when you go to ask for feet, they won't give you trouble. They'll just give them up because they'll think, huh, when that person's done, I always feel better. It's like the comic. What? The comic you told me about. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, That's a good one. No, this foot's stupid. No, yeah. This foot's stupid. There's, um, there, good girl. There's a, a, um, a comic out there and it has a, a farrier working on a horse. The farrier's trying to pick up the foot and the horse won't pick it up. And uh, both of them have these little thought bubbles coming out of their head. And both of them are saying, wrong foot, stupid, because the horse is trying to pick up another foot. <coughs> you get it? That's funny. <laughs> and true. I talked about that this morning as well. Horses will sometimes ask for a different foot than what you're working on. And uh, I'm pretty sure they get pretty frustrated with people that don't listen to them. This frog's a little worse than the other one. I'm going to trim off the excess bar that's grown here. It's too much. It's not beneficial at all. Straighten things out. Yeah, she's a, a couple of weeks overdue, maybe. I could have got to it sooner for sure. Luckily, she's got very strong feet and puts up with a lot of my trimming. Right, Lena, don't step on Zeus. He's just this tiny little lump in the corner. Where did Jen go? Tea. Tea, right, yes. Oh. Lena, put your foot down. Zeus? See, now, Lena might be asking me to do the other foot. Uh, you know, Zeus, I would feel more comfortable if you were over here. Zeus, come here. Here. Zeus, okay. come. Come. I don't recommend having dogs around at all when trimming horses. Some horses react very poorly to dogs being around. <coughs> and uh, they can be distracting, like they are now. Um, so generally, I wouldn't have Zeus here. I don't know why. I mean, there's three of us here. There was three of us. So. Yeah. But mostly, I just tell them to go away. And leave entirely. Okay, so still straightening out bars. It's the first order of business. Laid over bars can be really problematic. A lot of times you can get um, uh, abscesses that will start at a bar junction. All right, Lena. See, she's getting a little more impatient. It's the longest trim we've probably ever done. Sit. Come on, Leah. Good girl. Has Zeus ever been hurt by a horse? Yes. Sadly. But he's fine. So we're cleaning up, or I'm cleaning out the seat of the corn here, which is the part where the bar and the outside wall come together into the heel. These areas can really build up and create a false perch and uh, also can fill up with uh, stuff that can cause abscesses. So, clean it out. A lot of overgrown bar here. Generally, I don't mess around with the sole much, but this stuff is flaking off and I need to know where to trim the excess bar. And sometimes the only way you can figure that out I get rid of the stuff that's going to exfoliate off in the first place. 
just speeding up nature more than anything. So, but generally you don't want to touch the sole at all. Leave the sole alone. It's your best indicator of how to trim the rest of the hoof. So that's not looking too bad. I'll probably do this frog a bit. It's already got a layer that's coming off. So I'll just continue that forward. that and when you do this you'll start to start discover little pockets of stuff like in the middle here she's getting impatient i'll give her food back again you want to give them back before they start yelling at you and telling you what to do or you'll be in a fight and you can never win a fight with a horse unless you're really forceful and then you've lost the fight mentally you'll have even more trouble next time or somebody else will have more trouble next time so that's why we try to leave horses in good shape someone's wondering if you would ever consider selling lena nope sorry right. never ever she's with us till she dies that's a quick answer wasn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i mean she's one of the original three you can't uh, I just couldn't do it. I'm way too attached to her now. Lena, you got a pocket of junk in here. Can you please let me just clean it out? He's happy to hear that. Or her. Oh, oh yeah? I can't tell. <laughs> oh, well. That's good. Yeah. No, Lena's... I'm way too attached to this big lug. Between Lena and Zeus, you're all set. What about Luke? And Roni. I don't know about that guy. Hey. I mean, does anybody really like a quarter horse? He may be a nutcase, but he's our nutcase. <laughs> yeah. He's a good one. Yeah. Okay, that's looking a little sharper. So, the bottom of the hoof structure has now been set a little more correctly. Now I can work on the outside. Forward. Sit. You're making me nervous. I'll send you out of here in a minute. I try, try never to trim from the top. It weakens the hook wall and uh, doesn't give you a clear indication of where to trim. So. <coughs> Let's do this. How's the view? Is it looking okay if you can see? Yeah, just oh, um, a couple more things in here. It's beautiful and has a good one. Yeah. Uh, or to bevel sort of outwards. Not a lot though. You have to be very careful trimming the very, very back of the frog. I've seen it done where horses are just trimmed raw back there. Hurts. Or, or the why do you why do all farriers start at the front? Oh, good question. I don't always start at the front, uh, but uh, it is very common to start at the front. Um, I'd say it's person by person, but sometimes when you walk up to a horse and you see that the back feet are a little more trouble than the front, you go to the backs first, but the horse carries most of its weight on the front feet. You want to get those correct before you have to mess around with the backs because they have to put all their weight on the front. So physiologically, that might be a good reason, but I'd say partially it's a becomes a bit of a habitual thing without even thinking about it much. Oh, and uh, more trouble. Oh, that's horse by horse, you know. Uh, I find back feet easier to do, probably. There's usually less to trim off. They're usually in better shape. Uh, so, but some front 
Some feet can be real trouble, so there's that as well. I do got a common question, actually. I'll answer it just in case somebody's thinking it and hasn't asked it. It's usually people ask me, do you ever use nippers instead of a wrap? And uh, the answer is no, I never knew, use nippers other than my little ones. I find a rasp more precise, or at least more precise for me. Maybe we'll give her a break before she demands it. She's getting pretty close. Said, I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super common question. <laughs> I find uh, nippers difficult to use. I find them imprecise in uh, what I want to take off because a rasp, most rasps are rough on one side, so I can really shape it to what I want it to be. Um, and uh, the other part of it is biologically, if we, um, when we trim our own fingernails, if you use a file almost daily, Compared to cutting them with cutter, nail cutters, so no nippers, just rasp. Just rasp. That's it. Oh, and Sue says thank you for the live streams. Like I said, I no longer have horses, and it makes it less painful. Well, Sue, I understand you did have that Arab that looks like Gracie, so I'm happy to have you. You're very welcome. Um, you know, I'm just hoping that you know, people can get some information and enjoy the time, and and uh, and uh, I enjoy teaching, so we all win. Okay, let's finish up this foot. Now I'm going to bring her foot around here. I'm a little bit better with my right hand than my left hand, so right hand. with the rasp, the rocks. So, let's take a little more frog off. Wait, 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 wait. Take a look real fast. You'll see that without even looking from the top, um, you know, you get you get that nice round. Does it show? Does it show on the video? So there you go. Yeah, I've got a few. I did, um, 
I did uh, a book review. If you look under the book reviews, oh god, hair everywhere. Um, the book reviews playlist. I did one on hoof trimming or hoof care. Uh, off the top of my head, it's an old one, but it's pretty good. Some of the information is a little outdated, but uh, a lot of the biology information is really good. Um, and it's uh, Pete Ramey's book, Hoof Care and Rehabilitation. I can't remember. Sorry. Just look up Pete Ramey, Hoof Care. You'll find his book. Check out that uh, book review I did of that book. And I think there was one more. Uh, it's got a pretty good DVD set as well. Look at Lena's hair is everywhere. Uh, it's got a DVD set that's pretty good as well. But I think even he says himself that he's, his, his older stuff is a little bit dated and he's got diff, some different ideas. Um, but it's a good start, so you could go with that. Uh, I don't know about anything newer because I haven't picked up books in particular. Usually I see a lot of online stuff. So, And then my own practices and my own understanding and studies. If it helps. What are the pockets from? Causes? <coughs> um, horses, frogs grow in layers. So you'll get... Uh, You'll get material that'll sort of slide in maybe from the side or it was already sort of embedded in there and then some some frog will kind of grow over top and you'll go and you'll sort of cut through or you'll you'll a lot of times as you get more experience you'll just know like there's a pocket here i know it it'll be this color a lot of the times it's just old frog sort of over top of it and holding it in there which is why you really do have to get to these things every three to four weeks because maybe after the first week or two something's happened and then it sort of goes over it and the bars work really well that way as well cause problems so I keep on top of it but generally it, everything goes fine most times how old should it when it gets its first trim ever um baby horses uh, if you mean that it needs a trim it's pretty long into it's in months from my bed has told me because they should be moving around if you've got mama and baby sitting in a stall most of the time it's a small stall and they can't move around much and they can't wear their feet down properly and, and do what they normally do then you do it so it's really going to be based on the circumstance i couldn't say exactly uh, but generally, uh, if kept on problem constantly moving is still in. Uh, but you'll want to sort of check them out, you know, touch and have their, their feet looked at and maybe picked up and stuff like that. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, and someone had asked if you jump. She responded, no. And he said, you should jump. Is there a reason why you don't jump? Um, I think, you know, people that, there are many people that love to jump their horses and go over things. We'll jump maybe for practical purposes, like getting over a log or a, a little uh, stream or something like that. Something that you got to get over when you're on. I don't really have any interest in jumping in an arena. Horses go over stuff for competition, if that's what you mean. Is it everyone listening? Good. All right, well, we'll finish off our front feet now. I'll do our back feet a little later. So that's good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and it was informative. And uh, if there's any more questions, I'll answer them. If not, we'll cut out. Let Zeus clean up. No. Just, just no. kidding. Make just kidding. Zeus is not going to clean up in here. Yeah, the, the intern has to do it. Okay, let's see. So I can see. Ah, okay. That's not me. Come back to me. There I am. <coughs> okay, so that's everything. Big, big video. What did we get up to? An hour again. Come on. Holy smokes. 
Um, so yeah, this live stream in conjunction with the other live stream can give you guys a pretty good idea of how I deal with hooves. And so you can see here, all proof of how, uh, I might do a really quick video. I'm not, not sure if I did in the past, but I might do one later and I'll show you what her hooves looked like when we first got her. When you answered the question about, is Lena for sale? Look, Jenny's avoiding the camera. I know, because I'm sick. She's sick. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on camera when she's sick. No. <laughs> okay, whatever. <Go> ahead. <laughs> is what, Lena for sale? Yeah, somebody I, asked that. Yeah, I said absolutely. Two yeah, bucks. whatever. I said there's no chance you would say that. Two bucks. Brad said no audio. No audio. Is the audio working? Somebody tell me. Turn your volume up. Does it work? Testing. One, two, three. Yeah, yes. it works fine. Sorry, your audio didn't work for a bit. Uh, Jen was just asking that question. She wasn't here when I said Lena's for sale. And I said, yes, she is. First come, first serve. No, you bring a shit. toonie. She's gone. Just kidding. She's not for sale. Never, ever. Oh, um, Jesus, don't forget to bill him for your time today. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa says she'd love to see the before and after. Yeah. Whoops, hang on. Come here, come here, face. Don't forget your hoofs over there, too. Yeah, I came for that originally. And then I realized she stood tied under the altar. Right, everybody's on the stream this time. <laughs> um, yeah, Alina isn't for sale. I mean, she's just part of the family here. And uh, I don't think there's anybody that would even let me sell her, even if I wanted to. Hi. Hi, Alina. It's a hoof. What do you think? Freaky, right? Ah, don't touch. <laughs> don't touch. It'll be. Do you have a pocket to put this in or something? Look at, look at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> look at that face. Look. Is this hay? <laughs> very gentle, very kind horse. I couldn't imagine... Um, I couldn't imagine letting her go. And, you know, I guess in, on, on the same note, you know, one of these days she's going to pass away before we do. She's old. Something that might live the whole time. So, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely, uh, I'll try, I'll find some time. I'll get into the shop. And, uh... Put together a proper video about before and after um, and uh, you guys can see what they look like they were big they were pretty you know they were ugly weren't they yeah well yeah. she was a troubled horse she's a, we got her. she's a pretty troubled horse when we got her and now she's the people didn't want her yep she was free outside of uh um shipping yeah and uh now she's happy. <laughs> she's 300 bucks or something. 300, 350? 300. 300 bucks. Someone said you're Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> she's sick That's too. Funny. She's She's got a no, cold. No, 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 no. <laughs> sick. Very, very sick. Hello, yeah. everyone. <laughs> there goes Lena. She's left. She's like, I'm not telling her any of you noisies. <laughs> so. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. You guys can definitely version. I said a box of carrots. She had some carrots. We had a volunteer come this morning, as I also mentioned in the other stream. And she did, uh, they brought some carrots. So, anyway, so that's her trim. You can see a little bit better, maybe here on, you know, stop touching the camera on the ground here. It's just a nice, symmetrical, round looking hoof wall. Um, and that, that type of build of a hoof doesn't come from. Uh, you know, waiting a long time to trim uh, or uh, trimming from the top. You can't make that happen. That happens because the bottom of the hoof, uh, the, the sole of the hoof indicates how you can trim the outside of the hoof. You can't trim the outside of the hoof to, to, to what you think it should look like. 
you trim it to what the foot tells you to trim it to. Kind of hard to explain. But. Anyways, we're going to wander on up. We've got Zeus. The girls are talking. I'm going to go up to the top with my internet stream. So that sort of concludes that. If you guys had any questions on that, you can stick something in the comments down below if you'd like. Um, I'll try to answer, but hoof stuff is pretty involved. And, uh, you know, the um, the theory behind it is is deep. You can't just read a book or watch one video or goof around with one horse. You really got to get a variety of information that allows you to critically think through how to trim. And so you're not just doing one methodology or one technique or one type of trimming. It just won't, it won't work, it won't do. And I, I, I urge people not to, to do that. Um, it's a good start, but don't make it a finish, I guess you could say. So, you know, trimming Lena would be very different from trimming macaroni. Trimming macaroni is very different from trimming Gracie, for that matter. You guys have seen some Gracie stuff. Uh, and Luke is also very, very different. We're not sure what the horse he is. We're starting to think more and more that he's got some Arabian in him. I'm just going to put some stuff away. Come up to the top. And, uh, you know, if he's got some thoroughbred in him, he's going to have some different issues. You know, and and uh, Lena's feet, you know, you've, you saw the, the hoof wall. I mean, it's thick stuff. Whereas, uh, you know, Luke's walls are quite much thinner. Roni's walls are probably about the same. Gracie's walls are very strong. They go down a lot and they're, and they're tough, but you know, again, totally different shape. So, well, anyways, I'm gonna put my stuff away. You guys can wander with me. I'll check to see. Is there any more questions? Come you guys aren't even looking. I've lost my helpers. Were there any more questions? No? Should I check? I'll check one more time before I shut down. Whew, that was awesome help. Do you see anything? I'm just gonna put my tools away. I'll check for sure. Tracy says my horse is free. Also, just Oh, free. Horse is free? Yeah. Uh, free video of Zeus. It was, wasn't it? He's, he's an easy subject. So, okay, let me just quickly look at the sky tonight. Beautiful blue. The voice is off. Well, it's getting to be a long stream. They might, might go off. Enjoy your videos. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, you're welcome, Teresa. Oh uh, yeah, I was just looking through just to see if there's anything that I missed. You gotta go home. Well, thanks just for helping. Just a bunch of thank yous. Bunch of thank yous, yeah. I always like thank yous. I try to say thank you a lot as myself. Brianna, now you guys know. <laughs> She's just B. Nobody watches the live stream today. Okay, see you next. See you then. You're out? Okay, let's see you next weekend. Yeah. She didn't even text to say she was coming today, so. <laughs> I just, forgot to. Just showed up. She just showed up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we are uh, complete on this live stream. I'm going to triple check with Zeus here. Any uh, questions? In the end, I see Zeus is there hanging out. And uh, make sure I didn't miss anything myself. I'd like to always just have a quick check. But hoof trimming is a big deal. Uh, the questions are good, some of them are hard. Um, you know, so can't. Uh, can't give an answer with one go like it's just one thing that you can answer with and uh, the um, uh, 
uh, it becomes more convoluted, it becomes more circumstance-based and situation-based and horse-based and, you know, what, what do people do with the trims and stuff like that. So, right, Zeus? Just never know. Okay, uh, you're welcome, everybody. For everybody who said thank you, um, you know, I really appreciate everybody saying thank you. You're very welcome. Hopefully that's helped some people. Uh, you know, these things, they may not be scheduled, but if you happen to catch it, it's awesome. If not, I mean, it's always recorded. You guys can check it out later and stuff. Plus, they're long anyways. Uh, great video, number two of Zeus. Well, what time is it? Hour and a half, and you'll see number three. But you guys, some of you guys have already seen it, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, she does have a sweet forever home, I hope. You know, as long as we can keep the horses around, um, we will. Lena needs a P.O. box. Well, the address to this place isn't hidden away at all. Um, if a box of carrots arrives, we'd probably feed them to you. Hmm. Here comes Jen. Yeah. Is that Jen narrating? Yeah, Jen and B were narrating. All good? Did they leave? It's five o'clock? 4.30. 4.30. Whew. All right, moving on. Um, let's see. To see the before and after. Yeah, I'll do that. Live stream, stay tuned. So welcome. Whew. Want a coffee when you're done? I would love a coffee. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll be in just two seconds. Make sure. I'm just trying to make sure I get uh, everybody answered here. Teresa, if you're still here, thank you very much again. Way too kind. That's great. Um, Non-binary friend? What does that even mean? I'm not sure who that is. Um, no, I don't jump. Um, you know, some people like to jump. I, I, I don't, uh, unless I need to. Uh, I do a lot of other stuff outside of that, but it's important that your horse is able to jump and that if your horse were to jump, you should be kind of ready <laughs> if that were to happen. Um, yeah. Still don't know who non-binary friend you didn't let me pay for lunch. lunch. Well, thank you. I don't remember who I didn't let pay for lunch. Do I recommend any good resource books to refer? Oh yeah, to that. Yeah, uh, uh, for hoof stuff. Um, and if I do remember, if you come back to this video, I'll do my best to. Um, uh, uh, <coughs> I'll do my best to remember to put a link in to where that is in case anybody else has that question. You were watching this, and so. Uh, Lena is probably thinking it's the ultimate hoof treatment package. It's taking longer than normal. Uh, I don't know. You know, I actually think that horse is a little bit impatient when you're continuously messing. It. Pick your foot up, put it down. Pick it up, put it up. Pick it up. Put... I think it just gets tiring for them. I don't. I don't know how much horses would enjoy that. Um, yeah. So. Uh, the stream is bad. Yo, sorry. I, you know, sometimes the stream's going to turn a little bit bad. We're doing really well with the Wi-Fi. Um, and uh yeah that's what it is non by i know who you are okay stream is all jacked up trimming the back feet i answered that right sue pictures flaking out lena is an amazing horse you know we got really lucky with her um so yeah the question about whether i'd sell her i just couldn't i don't i don't think I had. uh yeah we've had lena since 2016, the summer of 2016. Hmm. So maybe not even three years yet. She's beautiful. She's amazing. She's good with kids. She teaches a lot of kids stuff. Um, she's a big, huge horse, so she's like a couch to sit on. Um, and so she teaches the kids really well, even though they sort of have to sit wide on her. Uh, but usually we'll do a lot of bareback stuff or with a bareback pad and um, uh, get ho get get the kids used to balancing and stuff. So Lena's, Lena's invaluable for many things, uh, not just because she's such a really cool uh, animal, 
uh, emotionally or mentally, but you know she's she's just amazing to to have around people, and she's very peaceful. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, I think we've got everything. Everybody was already asked. I uh, already asked that, and Jen and B got that figured out. Um, so that's about it. I think that's it. Whew, that's a lot of comments this time around. It's amazing. So thanks everybody for sticking it out, watching, and um, oh, Jen's still on watching. Same time zone. Yeah. Zeus videos are great. They are really cool. Uh, I wasn't originally going to do that, but uh, Zeus, the Zeus little intermission videos that I put in in videos here and there, um, Jen figured that since the video was so long, it wouldn't, uh, um, no, people might not watch it. They might skip over it. So she says, why don't you just separate that out? So there was one I did a while back that didn't get, uh, it was way down in the beginning of the of creating this channel and I was goofing around in the winter and I took this video and I put it up. It didn't get very many views, I think maybe 96. It was very, very little. So I took that one out and then one that I did a little while back and then the one I did a couple days ago and just separate them out. And so the next one will be coming up in about an hour or so. So if you haven't watched the video that it has it in, then you'll see it. It's just, you know, one of those minute, one minute things. Um, how long have you had the place? Um, uh going on three years yeah yeah not too long um, but and let's see how do you pronounce your name my name is pronounced graham um, my mom named me she's from england and it's a english slash irish name and it's spelt a little bit odd as well it's not the g-r-a-h-a-m right it's g-r-a-e-m-e -E, and it's pronounced graham so Pretty much like normal Graham, except it's spelled different. So. My sub stats continue to go through the roof. Yeah, I mean, things are coming along nicely. And the encouraging thing about the subs and views and stuff like that going up is that it, with any luck, I'm, I'm hopefully sort of reaching a few more people out there that have, a lot of people have the same mindset. And um, and so it helps them be feel a little bit more reinforced that they're doing the right thing or what they feel is the right thing and you know another person's doing this thing kind of thing and uh, so that type of encouragement is great and if I happen to um, you know change anybody's mind from like oh well, I used to do this this is the way you do it oh this is another way you know if people are open-minded to a different way of doing things that I feel is kind and nice and um, helpful to the horse then I think it's great you know really lucky to have this service like YouTube before YouTube came along you used to have to sort of host your own videos and stuff and the bandwidth for it would just be through the roof it'd be it'd be too costly now it's free i mean outside of selling your uh identity <laughs> the drone stuff debbie yes absolutely i do actually take a reasonable amount of drone footage you guys don't see very much if you think about how long each video is that i put up here on youtube i mean you're looking at about what maybe half an hour of my full day um a lot of the footage that I do take ends up what it's referred to as on the floor. And so, you know, I'll cut together together a bunch of stuff. And if I happen to get some drone footage and it sort of fits into the story or the sort of the thing that I want to talk about, then I'll put it in. But outside of that, uh, I don't. And then, um, you know, I might do it another time. I might think, oh, that's a good idea. I should talk about that. Uh, and, uh, and then it becomes sort of the subject within the video. But I do actually take a reasonable amount of drone footage. Uh, every horse that comes here, as long as the owners are cool with it, which all of them are um, so far, uh, they they think, great, yeah, no problem. And uh, um, you know, you get out there with the drone and you the, the horses will get worried. Some horses will really freak out. And uh, I've got I, I have an older drone which is um, uh, it's the white ones. And, and they're big, they're about yay big or so. But the smaller one that I got is called the Mavic Air. And uh, oh, somebody just asked, which drone did you get? <coughs> um, there's one company that puts out the best drones. It's turning into a tech com commentary now. 
it moves to technical stuff. But if you guys are curious, if you're ever thinking about, oh, a drone would be kind of cool, DJI, the company DJI, uh, sells piles of drones. Uh, they sell the gimbal that I use for my normal camera. I actually have another gimbal for the phone, but I don't use it very often because I don't do stuff for the phone because it's backwards. It's irritating. I don't like it. Um, so they sell a lot of really good equipment, and uh, the drone that I have is called a, a Mavic Air. It's the smallest and lightest outside of this one called a Spark, which is totally useless. Uh, but the Mavic Air is small. It folds up. I could actually fit it into the pocket of my jacket if I wanted to. The remote folds up really small. You can take the little knobs off and tuck them in, and then that fits in the other pocket. And my original idea, because um, I only got it, well, maybe six months ago or so, maybe. But my original idea was to be able to put it in, in, in a small backpack or in the pack that I have on my saddle when I go trail riding, and which is one of the reasons why I get my horses used to... Uh, drones because when I want to go trail riding you can launch the thing from your hand you know you just press a button say take off and it'll go and it'll just come up into the air and I don't want my horses freaking out especially when I'm on them. and so that was my idea is I wanted to get some cinematic drone footage and and, and whatnot so the smallest one is the Mavic Air folds up really nicely uh, they do have two newer ones a Mavic Pro and Mavic Zoom I think it's called um, they're both good drones. They're all really good drones. Um, but the Mavic Air is the smallest and will carry well. Uh, battery life is pretty good. Probably about 20 to 25 minutes of flying time, depending on how crazy you're going. And the footage is phenomenal. Uh, as you saw with the slow-mo footage, it takes 120 frames per second, which is four times the speed of normal broadcast footage. So, um, anyways, that's about it. Hopefully that answers that question. Uh, last one maybe, and then uh, Jen's bringing a coffee, I think. I don't know if it's done. If she's still on here, she might say, coffee's done, come get it. <laughs> Recommendations for cameras? Go get a GoPro. Uh, they're so versatile, and um, they take great footage. You can't zoom and stuff, but, uh, you know, you can um, you can use it. It's so many things. It's so tiny and small. The battery lasts pretty good. The screen's good. Footage is great. Um so but if you were doing what i was doing and sort of vlogging or running around with a camera and stuff like that you'll probably get something that has a zoom because there's many times as you've seen in, in the videos i'll need to zoom into something like oh look over there and i'll and i'll zoom all the way in so uh i did have an amazon if i use and nobody ever um oh it's done and she's in the living room guys so i'm out um and nobody, uh, nobody really clicked on anything. I didn't really care. I was like, oh, whatever. Um, so, I guess I should grab my stuff, eh? Uh, I don't know. I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out. So. Okay, everybody. I, I very much appreciate everybody coming in with your comments and your thank yous and all the lovely words and, and compliments. Hopefully, you know, something's come of that. Lena's feet are a great example to show. Uh, I've got a an interesting series planned soon. To talk about you, but I'm still trying to get it planned out really precisely because I don't want to. Um, I'm very cautious to sort of be one of those people that puts out something that says, "Oh, if you do this, you can trim your horse," because it's not the case. Be very cautious and careful about these kinds of things. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. At least a starter. If anybody's thinking they can get on with figuring out their horses' hooves, you can. Just takes time. But I'm gonna go get my coffee now. It's very nice of to make it. She's probably still. I'm chucking my stuff in here. I'm bringing your battery. It's my battery. Half mine. Looks like my phone. Okay, guys, thanks for watching again. I will see you again, well, probably tomorrow.